In class four, we're gonna take a look at uh, a second part of compression techniques, and these are compression enhancements. Things like parallel compression, pumping and breathing compression techniques, layering compression. So you saw like a small example of that on the base example that I did in class three. And we can do different types of things where there are layers of compression. No one compressor is necessarily working too hard. Um, and I think when listening to a sound, I think probably the the way that you would select what dynamics processor to use and how to apply it is essentially by really listening and analyzing the signal, figuring out what the problem areas are, and then picking the best tool to deal with it, to manage it. So for example, you know, if I have, you know, there are some classic, like for example, vintage processors that work particularly well for bass. So I'm gonna take this peak limiting thing out here for a second. But let's just say that like, you know, for example, like a classic dynamics processor for a bass is an LA-2A. Um, and one of the reasons is that an LA-2A has a unique thing, it's a, an optical compressor, and the optical compressors um, do not have a linear uh, ratio characteristic. Um, in other words, the ratio will increase the more gain reduction that you have, or the higher above threshold. And this is a fixed threshold compressor. It's got two controls, peak reduction, <laughs> which is probably the closest thing to your threshold, essentially. And then you have a make an output gain. And that's it, right? And then, so here, you know, if I'm listening to this here, I can have this doing the most subtle movement in, in, in the sound here. And it can actually have like a really amazing effect all right, so I'm just, this is actually like a sidechain um, um, filter, which controls the frequencies that are triggering it. And what's really cool about optical components and basses is it, it gives low end an incredible depth in imaging, which makes it perfectly suited for, for a bass. And that combination and those sorts of combinations work amazing because no matter what I do with a Renaissance compressor, I won't get the sound of this. This has harmonic distortion characters. It has transformers. It's got tubes built into it. It's got optical components. So you're getting like some emulation of some things that help to serve a role, okay, in the control of the sound, help to give it like that extra shine. So I'm not afraid to use two, three, four compressors on track. Right here, it is like also a tape emulation on the back end, and that's applying tape compression, right? We've got a guitar amp on the front. We're reamping the sound. So that is running through tubes, and it's running through a speaker um, virtually, and that applies compression characters. It's not going to be perfectly uh, exact in terms of its replication of the input signal that's coming in. So there's layers of this stuff that gets put on. This then gets fed into, you know, um, a stem and I can have a compressor on the stem and then it gets in, put into the mix bus and I have a compressor on the mix bus. And the whole idea is that I can have an amazing amount of control over each aspect or part of the sound that I want to control, get very detailed with it. And then in the context of all of that, shape the sound exactly the way that I want it. So by the time it gets out to the stem and out to the mix bus, it's sitting really solid. It has like depth, has really good imaging characteristic. You can feel the depth and presence. You can feel the movement of it, the transition from note to note, the way that it interrelates with the rest of the instruments and the way that it weaves in and out of the rest of the instruments. And when you capture those characteristics, you get this incredible sense of depth. Uh, of front back depth, right? Very subtle things. It's like you'll notice with, and I'll show you some more heavy compression techniques, like especially when you get into parallel processing and parallel compression, it's very easy to just, you know, um, you know, take for example, like a, um, let's just see here if I have, a, I have a couple of things in here, but that's like, okay, that's, so that's my reverb, but I don't have like, so something that I would call like um, a squash track. So, um, or a parallel compression track. And there are many, many, many ways to use something like this. But here I can hit something and maybe I'll just, you know, just for the sake of a uh, quick example here, 
I'll take this and then maybe, you know, through, you know, like the series of different things here, I'm also going to feed my reverbs into this, as a matter of fact, and um, pop this in. Uh, and when I, when I put all of these guys in there, and, and, you know, they're feeding in, so you can see all the sends coming in to here. And uh, I've turned my drums into a bass. Amazing. Right, so here now, uh, all right, this is my reverb. And now here, what I could do is I can do some really excessive processing. And what this allows me to do, and and you know, there there when you get into uh, analog components, this can have a little bit more grit to it, you know, is it can add like. Exaggerated excitement, hype, if you will. And you notice the feeding of the effects into this is really important, right? What this is doing in this parallel channel, just in this very simple thing, and I try to set it pretty close to, I guess, what would be like a 64th note or a 32nd note, because uh, we had like around 260, uh, 260, 130, that's about 65, which is about half. Though. So it was right in, in that same, or trying to get into that same area. Again, musical movement. With a slower attack, though, I want this to kind of add some punchiness into it. And then I could EQ it going into that so I can control what specific frequency areas. There are many ways to do this because you could do this parallel with a vocal, uh, just for a vocal within specific frequency areas. That's a very common thing. And you could do it with a guitar. And then here with this parallel compression, we can give like a sort of exaggerated hyped up version of what we're doing on the individual tracks. And then it gives us the ability to blend that in independently of these guys. And by doing that, what I can do is I have control for how much hype I want this and how much of the original dynamic I want to keep and preserve in there. And that's a really, really, really cool thing, you know, in terms of um, just having that extra measure of control. The problem with just heavily processing your individual tracks is that you're really committed to that sound. And then you also have to hype up the other elements along there in some similar fashion so that one doesn't sound like way over exaggerated relative to the other. Sometimes that contrast is kind of cool, but quite often it sounds disjointed. It sounds like they don't belong together, right? So, um, so it's all, you know, really, really big part. Now, in this particular class, we're also going to get into mix stem processing and mix bus processing. This may stem out, no pun intended, into, or pun intended, into a whole separate class. So don't be surprised if I just kind of break this out into a whole separate class, because I think, you know, the stem and the mix bus processing is, you know, uh, um, a, a pretty significant um, part of the process and maybe should be relatively better, you know, towards the end, because this is the stuff that you do at the very end. The stem and the, the way that I lay out um, uh, my uh, productions and mixing is that I have individual tracks, each grouping, if I set them up into, like, for example, I have my bass and my drums uh, together. So, um, and if I had percussion, I would mix that in all together. So sometimes I go, like, for a rock song, usually the bass goes with the guitars, okay? But in this case, I just have it routed with the drums for right now. So I would route all of that into a stem. All of the effects, if I had like a chorus effect on the bass, would also go to the stem. And the reflections and um, reverb and stuff that I had on the drums would also go into the stem. And no other instrument would use it except for members of that stem group if that makes sense. Okay, so now here, all of these elements are going into the stem, and this allows me to compress and process the whole grouping of these guys. So this was 
like a heavy duty sort of squash parallel compression track. That's mixed in as well. And now when I got it here, I could take the overall sound and just kind of blend it together, meld it together. So maybe I use an SSL bus compressor or maybe I use like a max volume, like low level and, you know, a peak uh, compressor. Uh, or maybe I use like a Fairchild or something like that. Whatever sounds best. Maybe I don't use anything at all. Maybe I use tape emulations. I have no idea. But whatever sounds best. And I can take that whole sound and sort of, sort of blend it all together. Pull the effects in and really glue them together with the sound. And then if I do that with each grouping, guitars and keys, lead vocals, background vocals, if there was a horn section, that might be on a separate stem. And then they all get blended together and then you have a mix bus compressor that pulls all that together. So this architecture and this layout make so many things easy. So not just um, compressing on individual uh, areas, but also the ability to print stems. You know, I can print, you know, instrumental track, really easy. Uh, I can print acapella vocals, really easy because everything is already stemmed and laid out, you know, exactly the way that I need it or want it. And that's the basic idea there. So uh, don't be surprised that that ends up being a whole separate class if I feel like I just want to kind of, uh, you know, uh, or it could be that I have an extended class, like a three-hour class or something, which may be more likely the case. Uh, so anyway, this is like a, this is a big one, right? So there's loads of stuff in here that we're going to take a look at. Let's move on to class four preview or class five preview, excuse me.